Hey everyone, welcome back to our special character introduction series in honor of all real-life healthcare professionals, featuring some of our favorite fighting game doctors and nurses. Last video was all about doctors, so this time we'll focus on the nurses instead. Like I mentioned before, I won't be including characters with only a nurse costume to show for, which unfortunately excludes Morrigan, as cute as she was in the role during her combos in Pocket Fighter. Also, just so you know, I like to go through both the characters' storyline as well as their gameplay, which means I often have to leave someone behind. If you do remember a fighter that should have been here, leave it in the comment section below and I'll see if I can find an excuse to add them to another list later. With that said, let's get this ball rolling since the real list doesn't start until I get the most obvious character out of the way first. Just like I imagine most of you predicted, it's Valentine from Schoolgirls. Before we cover her, Here's a brief explanation about the plot in Schoolgirls. Set in the Canopy Kingdom, the characters are fighting for the opportunity to control the mysterious school heart, an artifact with the ability to grant wishes, albeit at a substantial cost. The schoolgirl is a monster that haunts humanity, the result of those with an impure soul attempting to use the heart. Valentine is the only survivor of The Last Hope, a group of special anti-schoolgirl labs operatives. Before meeting their end at the hands of the schoolgirl, the last hope worked for the mysterious Lab Zero and performed duties ranging from reconnaissance and sabotage to advanced research. Now Valentine works with Double and Marie, the current schoolgirl, carrying out her will from the shadows. She was responsible for Pain Will's transformation under the direction of Brain Drain, though she was probably forced to do so, given the fact that she hates him to the point of becoming an assassin to kill him. Little is known about her apart from her service as a Last Hope operative and servant of the schoolgirl. Her motive to join the schoolgirl was chiefly out of self-preservation, but also in the hopes of researching the powers that control the school heart behind enemy lines. Despite taking orders from higher powers, Valentine's actions are largely influenced by her own personal agenda. What precious little is known about Valentine is evidence in her story mode and combat dialogue. She often comes across as impersonal and condescending, with little emotional fluctuation. She does not hesitate to resort to murder, and aside from feeling slight guilt towards pain will, Valentine has no real morality. She might, however, be acting in that manner to conceal her good intent and emotions. In fact, Valentine's origin story from Schoolgirls Mobile shows her as someone very capable of genuine concern for those around her. Valentine lost her eye in the incident that destroyed Lab 7. The cross in her remaining eye is a result of the lab's experimental drug test, as the team were not only in charge of tests, but also test subjects themselves. Designed as essentially a combination of two fan service tropes, Naughty Nurse and Sexy Ninja, Valentine fights using acrobatics, a variety of hospital themed weapons, and a few ninjutsu based techniques. She's a very mobile character, whose fighting style emphasizes her attacks and combos to compensate for the fairly low damage output of her individual strikes. She can easily put her opponents in a vortex of mix-ups and make use of her mobility to confirm into combos from a large variety of situations. Valentine is largely regarded as a top-tier character, hovering between the S and A tier, so seeing her being used in a tournament is by no means a rare sight. When played well, this nurse is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Alright then, this takes care of Valentine. I suspect most of you were very much aware of her, but perhaps this won't be the case with our next character. It's Anesthesia from Rumble Roses. In her first appearance, Anesthesia is introduced as the personal assistant to the current champion, Lady X, though in reality she's the mastermind who created Lady X in the first place. She is also responsible for transforming Fujiko Hinomoto, Reiko's sister, into the ruthless evil Rose, which effectively makes her the main villain of the first game. Furthermore, it is believed that Anesthesia may also be behind many heel turns in other characters' story modes. Benikage, for example, observes that the Altered Fighters put a black demonic tattoo on them, likely means of denoting them as having been experimented on. Anesthesia later claims that she's building weapons for military use, explaining that Lady X is the ultimate weapon. In the second game, she's portrayed largely as just another wrestler, with the changes in other fighters being presumably unrelated to her. She even forms a tag team with Benikage, called the Balance of Terror, 
despite the fact that the ninja clearly hates her for her evil deeds. Anesthesia is a cruel and sinister woman, emotionally detached from the immorality of her research. During the first tournament, she expresses interest in Reiko, believing that she carries the same strong genes as her mother and sister. Despite passing herself off as a nurse, it is strongly implied that Anesthesia is a skilled surgeon. Her true training likely lies in cybernetics, as she created a human cyborg from the DNA of Kamikaze Rose. The transformation of Fujiko Hinomoto into Evil Rose, as well as the altered versions of the other characters, also implies that she is experienced in gene manipulation and behavioral conditioning. Anesthesia's sadistic nature is reflected in her fighting style. She excels at reversing her opponent's attacks and generally moves the build up a fighter's age gauge. As she is quite adept at performing particularly devastating reversals, she is well suited for pure humiliation matches and street fights. While she is not the best in terms of strength, she makes up with her speed and agility. Anesthesia can quickly get into striking distance and deliver unique moves that can build on her opponent's age gauge. This will be the point where I talk about her position in the tier list, but it turns out that Anesthesia is quite an interesting character when you start to look closer. Despite her main outfit consisting in a slutty variation of a nurse's attire, as you saw, her backstory seems to point that she might actually be a doctor instead of a nurse. And since every character in this game has an alter ego, Anesthesia can also be selected under a name that embraces her surgical abilities. This means she would be a perfect fit for both videos in this series, and since I failed to add her before, it's only fair that she gets a chance now. So without further ado, I present you Dr. Cutter from Rumble Roses. Though Dr. Cutter, or Dr. Anesthesia as she's known in the second game, is supposed to be an alter ego, given the nurse's already sinister nature, as well as all the schemes and plots she's been party to, it would be more accurate to say that the Dr. Cutter persona is Anesthesia's true self. Unlike with other alter egos, Cutter's agenda does not change, the only difference being that she no longer makes any attempt to conceal the true evil of her nature from others. She's very much the archetypical mad scientist in every sense of the word. Her actions in both games only furthering displaying her utter madness and evil nature. She captures and experiments on live human subjects and seems to take great delight in what she does, even her face persona openly admitted to this. Kurter is particularly interested in the genetics of the members of the Hinomoto family, having already experimented on Reiko's mother, the Kamikaze Rose, and her sister, Fujiko. However, she seems to begrudge Reiko as the young woman has consistently evaded her clutches. She seems to view the defeat of her alter ego and the failure of the original Lady Axe as nothing more than a learning opportunity, using the information gathered from the original to develop the upgraded Lady Axe subsistence. When the player wins enough battles to achieve superstar status, which would normally unlock a new costume, in Dr. Cutter's case, she actually becomes the alien oddity, complete with a bizarre new look and introduction depicting her as an extraterrestrial life form. As with Evil Rose, whose superstar form gives her reptilian features, the game makes no attempt to clarify if Dr. Cutter is really an alien or simply masquerading as one. Having turned Kamikaze Rose into a cyborg, then brainwashed Fujiko Hinomoto and possibly later changed her into a human reptile mutant, Cutter seems even more obsessed with surpassing the limits of the human form and is willing to do anything to realize this goal. It's even possible that the Twisted Scientist has been experimented on herself too. Dr. Cutter's fighting style has some similarities to her alter ego, with a focus on humiliation building moves and reversal attacks. Her reversals are particularly devastating as she's quick to exploit the disorientation of her opponents. Though her limited reach and stamina make her vulnerable in more traditional match types, once a killer move is executed correctly, she can inflict considerable damage. Players are recommended to become familiar with moves that build her opponent's age gauge so that Cutter can quickly deliver her humiliation move right away. As for tier placement of both Anesthesia and Dr. Cutter, it's important to note that Rumble Roses isn't exactly the most balanced game ever. Many characters can exploit flaws in the game to either do huge amounts of damage or straight up infinites, sometimes even being able to tag a partner into the ring to continue the combo forever. As such, characters with a viable infinite are naturally listed higher in the tier list, 
as even the smallest mistakes from the opponent can doom them to certain death, regardless of how good their arsenal is. The good news for the nurse slash doctor is that both alter egos come equipped with infinites, even if some of them require precise inputs. This puts Anesthesia and Dr. Cutter in the S tier, alongside a good chunk of the cast, with half of the remaining characters still being quite dangerous due to their ability to inflict such ridiculous amounts of damage that you might as well call it infinites. Anyone below that line though, which, funny enough, includes most of the characters closely related to her, is easy prey. Alright, time to move from Rumble Roses and introduce a character from one of my favorite fighting game franchises. It's Kyoko Minazuki from Rival Schools. Kyoko is a popular school nurse, later chemistry teacher, at Justice High School. A beautiful and witty lady, she's an expert in orthopedics and anatomy with the control and precision of a surgical genius. Though she displays elegance, style and intelligence while at work, in her private life Kyoko is a very messy person, with poor household skills and a higher than usual affinity to sake. She's also the object of yearning of many male students, with them faking almost all sorts of illness and injuries on their way to the school's infirmary just to get close to her. Kyoko was sent along Hideo Shimazu to recruit students for Justice High. Like Hideo, she too was brainwashed by the school's principal, Raizo Imawano, after both she and Hideo had started to question Raizo's alarming and disturbing actions during the events of United by Fate. Eventually, Kyoko and Hideo are snapped out of their brainwashing by the students from Taiyo High. In her good ending, she finally decides to confront and expose a former employer, stating that her mission is to educate people so they don't become evil and corrupt like him. At first, she seems worried that her actions might put Hideo at risk too, but once he states his intention of personally protecting her, they both become even closer, with Kyoko seemingly accepting Hideo's never fully expressed marriage proposal. In Project Justice, which takes place a year after the events of the first game, Kyoko appears alongside Hideo and the Taiyo High physical education teacher, Hayato Neketsu, in the Justice High storyline, investigating not only the cause of the new school attacks, but also to find the assailant who had seriously injured and hospitalized Raizo. She was later attacked and kidnapped by Kuro Kirishima, who was in disguise as Batsu's evil doppelganger, Fatsu, causing Hideo and Hayato to work together to rescue her and put an end to Kuro's plans. After the incident, Kyoko and Hayato visit an injured Hideo at the hospital. While discussing their plans to rebuild Justice High, which had been burned down during the incident, Kyoko reminds Hideo about their upcoming wedding and marriage, causing him to severely blush while Hayato congratulates the pair. Have I mentioned lately how I love this adorable enemy style that Rival Schools has? Anyways, storyline out of the way, how exactly does Kyoko fare in the competitive scene? Well, nowadays to be considered a good character in Project Justice, you kinda need to have an effective jab pressure. High tier characters are usually the ones that can pester their opponents with light attacks that are really annoying to deal with. And it just turns out that Kyoko excels at that. Her pokes are lightning fast, probably the best in the game. And Shoten Sekai, which is her mini launcher, has lots of frame advantage and it's quite difficult to tardy counter, allowing Kyoko to maintain constant pressure. Those tools put Kyoko easily in the S tier, alongside other heavy hitters like Roy and Hyo, proving once again that fighting game nurses can be deadly adversaries. A big shout out to Banana Short, a Korean player of Project Justice that helped me with a lot of these technical details. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description so you guys can go check out some more high-level matches of Project Justice. For now though, we'll move on to another classic 3D fighting game franchise that is long overdue for a sequel. Our next fighting game nurse is Alice the Rabbit from Bloody Roar. A veteran in the series, Alice Tsukagami has been present in every iteration of Bloody Roar and even went through a few different wardrobes over the years. This is especially true after the fourth installment, Bloody Roar Primal Fury, aka Extreme, with her drastic change in appearance almost making her look like a completely different character. This was supposedly done to give her a more mature look, to be consistent with her growing up over the years. Alice is a kind-hearted girl who cares deeply about her friends and family 
and shows great compassion to those who are injured or ill. She also shows feelings for her longtime friend and main character of the series, Yugo, though their relationship is yet to become official. Although she's against violence, Alice will fight if this proves necessary to help someone she cares for. She was kidnapped as a small child by a company called Pylon and converted into a zoanthrope. She later managed to escape before being brainwashed, but Riko, a girl who helped her escape, wasn't so lucky. Alice then decides to join forces with Riko's mother, Mitsuko, who, by the way, is only playable in the first game, to fight back against Tylon and rescue her friend from their grasp. After everything is said and done, Alice, who was 17 during the first game, is adopted by Mitsuko and becomes Uriko's stepsister, having lost her real parents when she was abducted by the corporation. In Bloody Roar 2, which takes place five years in the future, Alice has graduated from high school and started working as a nurse, thus finally earning her spot in this list. One day, Yugo is brought to the hospital where she works, causing her a great deal of concern. She tries to talk to him about what happened, but Yugo leaves without giving any explanations, so she chases after him to drag him back for treatment. She ends up fighting Gado, who is trying to recruit people to lead his zoanthrope group that aims to bring peace between humans and their species, but Alice declines the offer, saying that she has her patience to attend to. Eventually, she succeeds in getting Yugo to come back and continues to carefully nurse his wounds, despite him believing that her reaction is greatly exaggerated. In the third game, Alice decides to leave her job as a professional nurse to join forces with Yugo, working as a volunteer in his organization. However, she becomes anxious when Yugo decides to leave alone to investigate the origins of the mysterious XGC mark that appears on the bodies of zoanthropes, bringing them great power at the cost of their lives. Having been marked by the XGC herself, Alice goes after Yugo, and the pair eventually find a man called Xion, who was behind the curse. After he's defeated, however, Alice shows compassion, treating his wounds even though Xion himself says that he doesn't deserve to live because of the horrible things he'd done. Aware that he was being influenced by dark forces, Alice tells him that his actions weren't his fault and he deserves to live as much as anyone else. Eventually, her kindness is enough to convince Xion to accept her help, and he asks to be taken back to civilization so that he can atone for his sins. During Primal Fury, we learn that the World of Coexistence, Yugo's organization, has grown from a small volunteer group to a commercial enterprise, causing Alice to be confused with the big changes occurring in the company. Amidst these confusing times, Yugo receives an invitation to participate in a tournament in the Zoanthrope Kingdom, which he decides to accept, having heard rumors of suspicious activities occurring behind the scenes. Alice eventually follows him, discovering only at the end, with great relief, that he's safe, but ends up slapping Yugo across the face for putting them in such a dangerous situation. In Bloody Roar 4, the last game in the series, Alice continues her work as a volunteer for the WOC, aiding those who had been injured in a recent earthquake in the area. That's when she meets a young girl dressed as a Shinto priestess, who requests Alice to tend to her friend, Ryoho. Eventually, Alice learns that Yoho is a dragon vassal of such tremendous power that he needs to be kept sealed to prevent danger to everyone around him. However, the seal has come loose recently, causing a variety of disasters like the recent wave of zoanthrope violence and even the earthquakes. After helping the little girl, Mana Kamishiro, reseal Ryoho's power, Alice vows to visit them from time to time, as an emissary of the WOC, even joking that the next time she'll bring a cake. And that, my dudes, was the last time we saw Alice. She had quite impressive character development, I should say, going from a schoolgirl to a professional nurse, and finally a volunteer in an organization that helps zoanthropes around the world. It's not every day that we see a fighting game series with such well-written characters, even if the voice acting in the last installment is one of the worst things in video game history. But enough backstory, let's talk about Alice's gameplay now. In human form, Alice is a relatively weak character with poor range. Her only real advantage is her speed and evasive skills. However, in beast form, she gains incredible strength and jumping ability, making her a tricky opponent to hit. She is well balanced and easy to handle by beginners, even if some of her moves are tricky to execute. 
Also, she is one of the few characters that has an air troll. As far as I can tell from my research, the tier list for Bloody Roar 4 usually lists Alice in the A tier, behind a few of the most powerful characters, but still pretty much a serious contender. And those were all my main fighting game nurses for today, but I still have one extra surprise. You see, there's a handheld spin-off of Guilty Gear, released for Bandai's Wonder Swamp Color, called Guilty Gear Petite, and that series has an exclusive character. Fanny, a nurse that fights with a giant syringe. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce her name, so I'm going for what I believe to be the Japanese pronunciation, if my katakanai skills are still on point. Apparently, Dr. Baldhead has saved her life in the past from a sickness, and in the first game, she's wondering why the doctor has suddenly disappeared. By the end of Guilty Gear Petit 2, Fanny has apparently accepted the fact that she'll never see her savior again, though the character has been well voted by fans to return in a future title. Obviously, I have no real competitive information about this character, but if anyone watching this video is a little more familiar with the game than me, you're more than welcome to share with us your opinions. And that's all I have for now, my friends. If you enjoy the content and you want to see more, please remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video and share this with your friends through social media. Also, I'm always looking for suggestions and opinions about the way I deliver these videos, so feel free to share your impressions in the comment section. If you want to see more, you can always find me on facebook.com slash chemiplayer, twitter.com slash chemiplayer or twitch.tv slash chemiplayer where I play all kinds of games and occasionally even make video game themed quizzes. For now, this has been a Duke Game Player, and I'll see you guys later.